A common issue you might run into when using pivot tables is that when you go to refresh the data, it doesn't look like it's refreshing. In this example, I've got a pivot table and my sales are not adding up. And I know that because here I've got total sales of 35,347. If I go on my data tab, I select this total price column, I've got $47,000 in transactions. So I would expect that if I right click, refresh, that number should update, but it's not. I can also go to the data tab, hit refresh all, it should do the same thing, but it's not updating. So if you run into an issue like this, it's usually to do with your data source. So if I go to the pivot table analyze section, there's an option to change my data source. If I do that, I can see that my range is only going up to row 150. And the problem is, you know, let's say I've added, added data here. So you can see it's not including everything, right? I don't want to have to go in and manually update this every time I add data, but this is a common issue that can come uh, that you can come across when dealing with pivot tables, just because if you just go to insert and create a pivot table, you know, it's going to lock in that range and it's not necessarily going to automatically update for you. So I'm going to show you how we can get around this. So I'm not going to manually adjust this because that's, we don't want to do it the manual way. There's, there's a better way. There's two, two ways we can do that. One is by converting your data into a table. So here, if I go to insert table, and just say, okay, my table has headers, automatically it's detecting that range. So if I hit okay, and then now it's converted to a, uh, to a table, it's named table one. If I go back to my pivot table now, and if I go to pivot table, analyze, change my data source, you know, I can change this now to a range called table one. And the key thing is to use that, that named range. I can, I can change that name to whatever I want, but by doing that, I'm gonna have my named range set up. So now you can see I've got my total sales now 47,472. Now let's let's test this out. Let's go to sales transactions. Let's add a really large uh, sales value to see that that's updating. So I'm gonna copy this value from above. Let's increment this by one. And the only thing I'm gonna do is change this total price. So let's add something really big like $15,000. So it'll be noticeable when, when it increases. So if I go back into here, so it's still 47,472. I still need to refresh this. So now if I go to right click, refresh, look at that, it's updated that 15,000, it's got that in there. So I'm not running into that same issue where my range isn't updating. If I go to pivot table analyze, go to change data source, you can see it's referencing table one. It's not referencing that static range anymore. That's the key difference now, because now it remembers that we've got a named range set up. Now, you don't have to create a table. This is this is the easiest way when you're creating a pivot table because with, with a table, one of the benefits of it is it's automatically going to expand as you add data. If you've got formulas here, they're also going to expand as you add, add data. For example, if I added another row here, T202, or let's just copy it from below, it automatically you can see the formatting gets applied, so it's automatically expanding. So if I had any formulas, that would also copy over. Now, what if we didn't want to use a table? So let's convert this back into a range. I'm going to go to table design and convert to range. And so now the table is gone, and you know I no longer have that range. Now, if I go to refresh the data, let's say I re refresh. You know it's not going to it's not going to reference that table anymore. It's going back to referencing that range. So it's still technically going to work. It still has that, that data after I've converted it. But if I add new information, it's not going to reflect that. So let's add another transaction here. So I added, so it's going to two or three. Let's add one that goes to 204. And let's set this to $20,000. So we've got that range. So we don't have that table. So you'll notice the formatting does not update here. It's no longer automatically applying. There's no table indicator. When you convert it from a table back into a range, the formatting stays in place, but it does. it's not a table anymore. Even though it may look like one, it's technically not a table. So let's say, um, and actually let's just remove the formatting just to make that, that clear that we're not dealing with a table anymore because um, that's not, not automatically going to update. So we've got our, our data set here. And so right now we've got some, some gaps in it, but I'm gonna leave it as is. And actually let's, let's make this 17,000, just so it's a really large number. So our total should be about $99,000, right? 
Right now we've got 62,000. So if I just go to refresh, it's not going to update that. It's going to go up to 79. It's actually going to, because it went up to 203. So it's going to include this 17,000, but, it, but it's off by 20,000. So I can update this by creating a named range without using a table. And so this part can be a little bit tricky if you're not uh, used to creating um, uh, embedded formulas or, or complex ones that have multiple functions, but I'm going to show you how we do this. So I'm going to go to formula, click on named range, and I'm going to create a new named range. And let's say I'm going to call this my, my data. And so for this, I'm going to use the offset function. And the offset function is going to allow me to specify the size of my data set. And that's key to making sure that's going to adapt and change as I add more information to it. So for the offset function, the first argument I have to specify is a starting point. So I'm going to specify the start of my data set in the top leftmost cell. Then the next two arguments are if I want to move any rows or columns up or, uh, up, up or down or left or right. And in which case I don't, so I'm going to set those to zero. And then the next argument is going to allow me to specify how many, how many rows this data set should be. In this case, I'm going to use the count a function. That's going to count the number of non-blank cells. So it's important to make sure that we're specif specifying a range that does not contain any blanks. So the first column, column A, should not have any blanks in my data set. So I'm going to use that in the count a function. Next, I'm going to specify the number of columns. And this, I'm going to set just to that first row. So it's going to count again how many columns I've got. I'm going to close that. And now if I've done this properly, if I click on here, I should see exactly where it's ending. So we can see it's stopping in column L. And if I go all the way down here, it's going to stop at that last value that I've got there that I've entered. So now I've got this set up. So now my named range of data, I should be able to use this in my pivot table. So now if I go in here, change data source again, and then set this equal to data. So set it to my named range. And you can see now I've got that 99,000. So let's boost it up over 100,000 just to test this out one more time. So I'm gonna copy this value one more time. And let's say just add $1,000 just to get it up over 100,000. So now if I go here and now go to data, refresh, we've got 100,000. So now it's included that value. It's included the additional data that I've entered. And the key thing is, you know, making sure this value in column A is not blank, so it's calculating and counting it properly. So there's two ways you can make sure your pivot table updates when you enter new information. One is by actually creating a table for your data set. The other is by using the offset function, which can be a little bit um, harder to set up if you're not used to using that function, but both ways should be able to work. The key thing is by doing so, you can create named ranges. And by using named ranges, you're not relying on hard-coded values or hard coded ranges when you're creating a pivot table. And by doing that way, you'll be able to avoid the issue of refreshing your going to refresh your pivot table and seeing that the data isn't updated.